Welcome back to Variant Piranha. I'm Daniel Brubaker. Today I'm going to answer a few of your questions and give you an update of where we stand with things. It has been a couple of weeks since my last video and I just wanted to let you know what has been going on. What I have been working on mainly is corrections and early Quran manuscripts has been translated, it's being translated into a couple of different languages and one of those is basically ready to be published and I'll let you know via another announcement very soon uh, when that has been published. The second thing I want to do today is just answer some of your questions. I've just picked out a few today that caught my attention and cover sort of a range of uh, topics and perspectives. All right, here's the first one. It says, uh, Dr. Daniel Brubaker should make an effort to debunk Professor Bart Ehrman on the subject of Christianity. This should be his first move. Well, Bart Ehrman, I have had uh, discussions with him uh, by email over the, over the years, and uh, he's a colleague. I have uh, respect for him in his area of, um, you know, relating to, uh, to the study of the Bible, the biblical texts, and the biblical manuscripts. He does uh, have his academic work is, you know, his credentials are strong and, uh, and so forth. And so uh, as I've had need, I have had uh, interactions with him. But really, um, this comment has an assumption in it that I should somehow, that I'm somehow studying the wrong thing, that I shouldn't be doing the work that I'm doing, that I should be doing some different work. In other words, related to textual criticism of the uh, biblical manuscripts or defending the biblical manuscripts or whatever it is. There are lots of people doing that kind of work and uh, it's just not, <laughs> it's not what I've chosen to do. And so it's great that people do that. It's uh, something that's necessary to do, but uh, you know, this is just completely misses the point of the topic that I've chosen for my academic and, and scholarly work. And there are a lot of other people, as I've said, who can do what I'm doing or, or do things similar to what I'm doing, but each of us has to make a decision where we want to focus our particular energies in life. We have a certain number of days and, and hours and so forth. And, uh, and we just have to make those decisions. I can't do everything. And, and, you know, there are plenty of people, as I've said, who are working on um, biblical, biblical stuff and you can go read their things. People seem to be using the word debunk on here a lot. I don't really like the word debunk that much. We want to either verify, <laughs> confirm or disprove something. Then that's, uh, then, then that's one thing. But uh, the word debunk is, is kind of a, a loaded and a rhetorical term more than it is a, a scientific term. All right, here's uh, Bo Rudder asks, Dan, please cover ink, composition, watermarks, and hands. And uh, obviously these are things relating to uh, the codicology of early Quran manuscripts, and I've uh, studied that a little bit. I'm not the world's uh, expert on that. Uh, the person who has most um, uh, gone into that area and in fact teaches courses on Islamic codicology is uh, Francois de Roche. So at some point, however, it would be good to go over that in a video and talk about those things about inks and um, and the other features of the of the manuscript watermarks. Watermarks are something that come in on paper. They're not something that we see in um, in parchment, which is the earliest Qurans were written on parchment, and later on they started doing them on paper. So the watermarks are uh, something that we can discuss, but not something that's uh, totally relevant to the time period that I've been talking about. And uh, in hands, obviously, are, there are different uh, scribes have different handwritings, uh, and we will go into that at some point as well. So that's a good question and a good suggestion for a future video. Mark Bingham says, how could it be mid to late 7th century and have diacritics? And he refers to a particular point at um, the, the video that he comments on. Um, so this is referring to a manuscript that I've presented as um, mid to late seventh century. And in that case, it was probably late seventh century, uh, possibly even early eighth century. So, uh, but uh, be that as it may, this is an opportunity to address a matter of the uh, issue of diacritics. Now, most of the uh, earliest manuscripts, even the ones in the so-called Hijazi uh, hand um, style, uh, sometimes called Ma'il, um, have some, at least some diacritics. Not all of them do. There are some pages of manuscripts that have no diacritics whatsoever. And so it's also a common misconception uh, among those who haven't really thoroughly looked at the material that um, that all these early manuscripts have at least some diacritics. And so that was one of the points that Haitham Sidki made in his criticism of my uh, remarks in my book. And he just simply had not reviewed the literature uh, thoroughly, uh, nor the uh, seen enough manuscripts to know that there are some pages 
that have no diacritics whatsoever. So I corrected that in my response to him as well. All right, moving on. Uh, Predicator Veritatis says, great job, Dr. Rubaker. I wish I could have your permission to translate this video into Indonesian language and upload it on my channel. I believe it will benefit many people and will also bring more subscribers to your channel. God bless you. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for that. And I ha have been receiving a number of requests to translate these videos. And um, if you do have requests like that, please contact me individually in general. My uh, hope is that if you do make translations of the video, that you do a couple of things of my videos, that you do a couple of things. Number one, if you would uh, please translate, uh, not make any changes to the video itself. In other words, translate the entire thing and um, not make any editorial remarks or other comments on it, but uh, just do a translation of what it is that I've said. And uh, secondly, if you would link your translated video which you presumably publish on your channel, back to um, place a um, place a comment linking to that in the comment section under the video, the original video that I've put, and also place in your comments, uh, in your description of your video, a link back to the original video so that people can find my channel and come back to me. I would reserve the right to, you know, if something, if I become aware of uh, a translation that uh, is not accurately translated or is not done to um, to a standard that uh, I think reflects the original work, then I would uh, reserve the right to come um, over and ask you to take something down. But other than that, if you're doing a, just a straight translation and you want to put it up in, in your language, um, I would suggest generally uh, go ahead and, and do so, um, and then uh, be sure to refer people back to the original video. All right, here's another one. Uh, it's from Ahmad Abbas who says, what are you trying to prove? That scribes made errors or changes? All the examples you mentioned in this video don't have any impact on the meaning of any of the relevant verses whatsoever. So they would most probably be scribal errors corrected by others who revised their writing. Compare this to the introduction of the entire story of the women caught in adultery of the Gospel of John it is not found in ancient manuscripts nor in ancient commentaries on the Gospel of John. Or the triadic formula inserted in 1 John 5, 7, not found in any Greek manuscripts. I'm not against critical studying of the Quran, but if you want to prove the Quran is variant and has been changed, why not give strong, compelling evidence like the ones I gave off the top of my head regarding the New Testament? Okay, obviously the uh, the uh, there are a couple things to say here, and the first one is that the study of uh, New Testament and, and biblical text criticism is much more far advanced than the study of uh, Quranic textual criticism. It's been done for several hundred years and people know a lot of stuff about it. So we're still in fairly early stages of this work with uh, re relating to Quran manuscripts. And so that's, uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, just a general comment about the first John 5, 7. Um, that formula is uh, is inserted there, and it was contained actually in the. And I'm just talking from my my uh, general knowledge of this. It was um, contained, I, th I believe, in the Latin Vulgate of Jerome, and it had been originally a marginal notation that some later scribe appears to have taken as um, uh, part of the text itself. So this is why it's important to get back to the earliest manuscripts and look at what look at what was there and newer translations of the of the. Uh, New Testament don't include that portion of 1 John 5, 7. Um, but they are trying to get back to the, uh, you know, to the earliest, uh, to the earliest text in that case. All right, so are there things like that that would be found regarding the Quran? I, I don't know, but uh, part of the study that we're doing, that I'm doing, which I think is an honest study and other people are welcome to do it, is to look at the manuscripts and start asking these kind of questions and, and, uh, uh, for me, it's not the same thing as uh, as looking at the text of the of the Bible, obviously, because you know I'm a Christian. And I believe the Bible to be uh, inspired um, of God, and if I believe that about the Quran, I would not be a Christian. I would be a Muslim. So it's a, it's a different thing, and so I'm not that personally invested and concerned about um, really getting to the earliest text or, or determining, you know, for um, devotional reasons to determine what is the earliest text, but uh, from a more academic perspective. And, you know, obviously there are, there are questions of, of truth and things that come around that. But from the uh, scholarly and academic perspective, what I'm interested in doing is, is just looking at this period of history of the development of the text of the Quran or of the 
faithfulness to the text of the Quran or whatever it is, and to determine what was the uh, uh, tradition of the transmission in its written form, and how did that transmission relate to, uh, for example, the um, the orality that was present and so forth. And so these are these are natural questions, and I think it's fair to uh, fair to ask them. What am I trying to prove? Going back to the beginning of his comment there. Um, I'm not really trying to prove anything. I'm trying to study something. And so I think it's really important. A lot of people seem to be saying, you know, I'm trying to do something or show something or, or whatever. Yeah, I'm trying to show you what I've, what I've been doing. And obviously there is a curiosity behind this that uh, ha is connected to deeper issues. But I'm not trying to prove something. I'm trying to study something and allow you into my world as I study it and, uh, and share it with you. All right. have a couple more here. Um, this one is from Firman Hidayat says me myself as Muslim when looking a teacher to teach Quran the qualification should be number one able to speak write knows grammar Arabic number two have memorized at least half of Quran number three memorize some of the hadith especially regarding revelation and compilation of Quran if they don't qualify on that condition for me it's just the same like me they are only student and cannot rely on them because they are not capable enough, no matter what their title is, doctor, professor, or else's. Okay, well, and um, and these are uh, this is a fair statement and, and a comment, and I understand that if you were looking for a teacher to teach the Quran, which is not what I'm doing, uh, you would be looking for these sort of things. Obviously, you're looking for different things than a person who is going to be a teacher of the Quran, a teacher of a holy text, you know, I'm, I'm not, you probably presumably also be looking for somebody who is a Muslim to do something like that. And I am, I am not a Muslim. Um, I'm not a native Arabic speaker. Uh, my task, once again, is a carefully, uh, you know, more closely circumscribed task. It's narrower and uh, it's just a different area. So um, uh, this commenter, uh, Firman Hidayat, would, you know, be welcome to either pay attention to what I've presented and will continue to present uh, or not to uh, and to take me seriously or not to and that is uh, anybody can do that and, and make those sort of decisions but um, really uh, these are qualifications to memorize half the Quran I don't know of anybody among my academic colleagues who work in this area uh, the most respected people in in the area of study of, of Quran have not uh, have not memorized half the Quran at least in in Western academia and so that is um, a, an admirable thing that somebody, you know, that's a feat of, um, of uh, memory to be able to, to do something like that and, and accomplish it. But, um, you know, it, it, it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's a hard thing to do, but it's not something that uh, I would require of somebody who's doing academic or scholarly work. And the same thing with memorizing the Hadith. Memorizing Hadith, uh, obviously when you become very familiar with something, these things may roll off your tongue or, or you know them very well. And I see the memorization of the Quran and the Hadith as more of a, uh, largely a devotional activity uh, that is uh, not really necessarily required for good scholarly work. I would uh, just comment on a couple things. Obviously you've noticed in the comments there are a lot of people who are Christians who are following these videos and are interested in them. And uh, for various reasons, I presume, and a lot of people around the world, and uh, whoever you are, and whatever brings you here, I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful, and, and you're welcome here. Um, uh, Muslim bashing. I, I want to make clear that I have no intention of doing anything like that could be classified as Muslim bashing here, and um, I don't uh, invite anybody else to do Muslim bashing or, or anything like that. I don't consider you know, criticism or you know a strong. Uh, and discussion back and forth to be bashing. I like all people. I have no um, hatred for any human being, any other person. If you're watching this, I have no hatred for you. I have no uh, desire to bash you or hurt you or harm you in any way. And so, um, it's, uh, yeah, that's that's my intention. Obviously, there are thousands of people watching these videos, and so I don't know what each individual person's intention is or, or what uh, what's in their heart, but I just want you to know that what's in my heart is is nothing of the sort. It's not a bashing nature or anything that's uh, that's unkind. All right, let's move on to the last one here, and I'll just conclude with this. N, uh, the screen name N says, you're doing an amazing work for the sake of academia. I salute your professional and honest disposition, and I hope you keep that paramount. As an Arabic speaker and a Muslim, I find this work fascinating. 
While I do understand why some fellow Muslims find this sensitive, I think it is important to hear what you find and what you have to say. You said it, sir. We are all humans and we all do make mistakes. Uh, we all do make and we all do mistakes, and so did the early scribes. All right, so that's, I think, a good place to conclude this, and uh, those are, you know, good remarks. I am glad for uh, Muslims and everybody else who is following this channel. I'm getting buried in snow out here, so uh, um, I will wrap this up here and just let you know that more videos are coming. I have one more that's recorded that's uh, another page from uh, BL2165. There are maybe about a dozen pages in that manuscript that I think are have some interesting things on them. I was looking back through my earlier notes from my visit to that manuscript back, well, back about seven years ago, actually, and I noticed that there are uh, about that many pages that have some interesting corrections. So the one I showed you in the last video was um, it was one of those that does, it did catch my eye because it had several corrections on it. Not all the pages have uh, corrections. And so I'll give that perspective as we do that. But you can look for that video fairly soon and other videos coming up, as well as an announcement about the uh, forthcoming uh, release of corrections and early Quran manuscripts in another language, which I'll tell you what that is soon. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. Let other people know about this channel. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care. Bye.